Good morning, everybody. This is Chris Stu, and I'm the Pomp Doc Product Manager here at E1. And I'm excited to spend a little bit of time with you talking about how we access historical Dynamics Now data, but inside of the Dynamics 365 Finance application. So this is a, a pretty interesting topic, I think, for anybody that has has then either been considering migration or has, has recently uh, migrated to, to that tool and is struggling with how they access that historical data. So let's jump right in. Uh, quick agenda. I'm going to be discussing a couple terms today that we'll use throughout the conversation. We'll talk a little bit about the overall migration strategy and then spend the bulk of our day on really that historical data access right inside of that uh, Dynamics 365 finance interface. Okay, I promised a couple terms. Here they are. The first one, Azure Data Lake. Um, I think, again, um, especially in the finance, the E365 finance area, I think Microsoft has been pushing data lakes quite a bit. And so there's probably a lot more familiarity, but there's a possibility that some of you may not um, have that, that much um, information on it. So very quickly, it is just a place inside of the customer's Azure account where we essentially have storage. And what does that mean? It's a storage that allows us to store all kinds of unstructured data. So it could be um, CSV files, it could be Excel files, could be PDFs, JPEGs, whatever it may be, we can put all those together. Whereas in the past, right, they had to be in a very uh, formatted way inside of a, a database. So this Azure Data Lake, we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. It, it, again, it is in the customer's account. And, and one of the most important things, I think, is as you dig into this, is this has been a hugely developer-intensive um, tool, I think, in the past. It's an awesome way of cost, you know, a cost-effective way of storing data. But for many people, it's all programmers that are, you know, pushing the data into there. And then, again, the flip side is how do you extract it out? So that's where we're going to start talking about the PopDoc Data Lake Upload Tool, because this kind of changes the paradigm where you don't have to be a developer to access all of this. And so what it is, is this is basically a tool that's going to connect to our on-premise uh, system. So again, we're talking about NAV today. It'll connect to your on-premise NAV, but then it, what it does is it pushes the data to your, your PopDoc account. Um, and again, this the data lake that's inside of there so that we can access it um, inside of D365 Finance, but also as any other place that it makes sense. So that's what we're going to focus a lot on, on today as we get into it. So there's there's two quick terms, and now we'll, we'll dig right into um, really what is our overall migration strategy. Again, I think many of you uh, that are watching this today, we are... Um, we're, we're coming from the on-premise world, right? That's one of the, the reasons is that maybe you are have been looking at this for some time and want to become more cloud-enabled. And so we're taking something that lived, you know, behind your firewall and your network, you know, for years, maybe 10, 20, 20 plus years in, in a lot of cases, and now we need to move that. So the, the things that we have to make sure that we understand is that, again, for most of you, you probably have your nav data hosted on a an on-premise you know SQL server and so that's certainly something we're going to we're going to talk about today there's others that may have their server hosted in in Azure for example or it could it could be AWS but um, maybe you have that SQL server is on a virtual machine somewhere else or again even others may be using Microsoft you know Azure SQL or you may have moved your nav data out there. Whatever your scenario is, um, we're going to give you that opportunity to connect to the data and then, again, uh, move it and make it accessible everywhere. The other part I do just want to point out very quickly is we are focusing on just the historical data. We're not talking about uh, all of those you know, master records like vendors and customers and employees and items and things like that. Those are all things that... Uh, you know, you're going to need to make sure that you get those inside of F, F and O or, again, finance the way that you need. And I'll just want to mention that, again, while we are focused primarily on seeing the data with PopDoc, we do have another product called Smart Connect that's really, really good at 
moving the data from one system to the other. So if you need, if that's part of your migration mix, if you need to move those his master records and things like that, that is a really good solution. But we're talking about all that history that you don't want to lose, but you still want to make accessible. So that's where we're going to focus on PopDoc for the, the remainder of today. Okay, so accessing that history inside of Dynamics 365 fin Finance. That is really what we're after. So what are a couple of key points to this? We can have lists that give us just the history. So what does that mean, right? The stuff that previously existed in NAV only, um, I can pull a list that says, here's all of my vendor payment history, or here's all of my you know, customer, here's all of the sales invoices, or whatever it may be, right? We can have a list that has just the information that previously existed inside of NAV. I can also do a combination list though, or we call it a merge list. And that can be a combination of the history plus the new information. So I can now have one list that has information from both of those systems. And I think for a lot of you out there, um, that may be a solution that you may want to pursue that only, you know, maybe maybe you only use it for seven years, right? If you have to go back um, and look at some of that data, maybe it's seven years or even some of you, maybe it's a two, three year kind of thing, right? Where you want the, the history and and the, and the new stuff. And then after a certain point in time, right, some of that data becomes less useful. So it is an option. Again, it can kind of streamline because you can have one place to look for that data. And then we can even do stuff like filtering the lists by, you know, by customer, by vendor, by account, whatever, so we can see more specific information. So let's jump right in. Let me switch over. Okay, and um, I'm not going to start in PopDoc. I'm actually want to start right inside of um, FNO or Finance D365 Finance, and I want to show you that again. We can right here. I have on, on a dashboard. I have PopDoc embedded inside of here. So let's go right. We're we're really thinking about the history on this one, right? How do I see the history as quickly as possible? So you can see. I have a number of scenarios here, right, where I have, you know, maybe some of the standard stuff inside of here. Um, here I have, you know, some information from Shopify coming in, uh, but we're gonna focus mainly on this area, right, is where I've taken my nav data that was previously on-prem and now has been put to the data lake, and now I wanna see that information. So if I click on this one, what we're gonna start seeing is this data right inside of FNO that has all of the information that, that I want. Now you can still interact with it, right? So if I want, you know, some, some, a couple other fields added onto here, so I'll just add like an amount and the customer name, for example. Uh, I can, you know, move fields around. Oops, let me do one more time. If I want to group by it, now this is kind of, um, kind of cool, is that now I'm getting the transactions by by customer. So if we expand this out, we can see here we go. Here's all those customer ledger entries uh, that we have for this particular customer. And so we have their subtotal as well as an overall subtotal down below. So this is pretty cool because this was nav data and now this is something that I can see right inside of this interface. We can you know switch between between lists, right? So if I actually wanted to go over to um, Here's an example of one that I actually had migrated over the other day. If I wanted to do it by by city, um, you you can again see that I have a favorite in here that I went to, and we can see all of the customers uh, sorted by city. And if I expand out London, there we go. We can see we have th three customers in in London right now. Okay, where I think a lot of this really makes sense though is more contextual. So if I pull up a customer, for example. What I have on this customer is I've embedded, uh, we call them widgets, and you can see that I have um, nav history. And so this is all of the orders for this. Uh, so this is the sales order uh, lines, I believe is what it is. So here's all of our um, sales order lines. Again, even though this is embedded on here, we can still filter uh, across this data, right? I can have as many, many filters as I like inside of here. And it pulls all the columns, even the ones that aren't necessarily on here. 
if we wanted to add columns to this, we can do it. If we wanted to, you know, do that grouping by um, find out by which item that we sold the most of for this customer, we're getting those those grouping totals, uh, some summary and quantity and stuff like that. So you have a lot of power that's given to the end end user to filter down that data even further. But the beautiful part is it's now right only specific for this one customer as opposed to you know maybe across all of the different customers inside of there. Okay. So I wanted to just give you just a taste of you know what you can do and how you can interact with it inside of um, inside of the, the solution. But now let's dig into what actually is driving this. So we're gonna talk about a couple different things. First of all, how do we connect to that on-prem Dynamics Nav data so that we can move it to the data lake? A couple of really key pieces here of information is that uh, we're really concerned about security, right? We wanna make sure that this solution is something that um, minimizes your, the need to you know, always bring in the, the IT team or, or, you know, poke a hole in your firewall. So what does that mean, right? Is that um, while your nav data is on a SQL server, we've made it so that you don't have to have a gateway or any kind of thing installed inside. This basically the application that we're gonna show you in a second allows us to connect to your on-premise SQL server without opening a port in your firewall. And then basically it changes it to a push. So we push it to the data lake that's, that's you know, your PopDoc account has access to. It will allow us to connect to all the nav lists. Um, so that's something that is coming very, very soon here, which is pretty cool. Now, the, what, what is the difference between, I guess, all the SQL tables and the nav lists? So I'll maybe spend just a minute talking about that. Um, with the SQL tables, maybe I'll start with that one. Right, it's gonna, you're gonna point it to a database and it is going to um, basically extract the companies out of there and then it's gonna bring over every table and make that a list inside of uh, the data lake and, and uh, available to PopDoc. With nav lists, this is some of the things you can kind of think of it like almost like the pages where we're maybe pulling information from multiple tables sometimes because again, if you just have sales line items, maybe that's not very meaningful. You might need some additional information that comes from the header on the sales order, or maybe it actually needs some information from the customer or the item or whatever. So we're pulling all that meaningful information into one list so that you have, you don't have to go five places to find that information. So that's kind of where we're still working out um, some of those things across all these uh, older versions, I think that's kind of one of the challenges, right? With with NAV is that um, we're, we're dealing with a lot of different uh, versions and then making sure that this works for the most amount of them. So we're getting, we're getting close on that, but um, today I'm gonna show you one aspect of this. So that's our connection to the data, but then we're gonna be moving it. So what is the part um, that's important about this? Again, it does, this, this process is running in your environment and it does not need to be set up on a server, right? It doesn't need to run on the same server as a SQL server. It doesn't even have to be a server. It actually could be a workstation, one that doesn't shut off, of course, but it, um, it can be an environment like that that allows us to push that data up. Um, another key part about it, people ask us is how, how long is this going to take, right? And so, um, there's, there's kind of two aspects to that. One is how fast can we extract it, which I mean, we have a very efficient process. And then the second part is how fast can we upload it? So let's talk about both of those. Um, a lot of this comes down to when we're extracting the information, a lot of it comes down to how much information you have, right? If you have a uh, hundred gigabytes of data, you know, that's, that's only going to take a couple of hours, maybe, let's say, maybe even less than that. If you have a couple of terabytes of data, that's obviously something that can probably more than an hour or two. That's something that could maybe even go into, uh, you know, possibly over a 24-hour period. It could, it could get you into multiple days. So that is one of the things that, again, just the amount of data that we have to extract because we, again, are hitting the SQL server and have to bring it out. 
And then the second part is we have to upload that, right? That's part of this tool. Um, after extracting, it moves it to the data lake. And so that is one piece of information, I guess, that um, depending on your connection to the internet, allowing upload speeds, uh, you may you may not have the same upload speeds as you know wherever you, wherever you run this at as other other people. So again, if you have to move 100 gigabytes versus two terabytes, um, you will find that that potentially you you may have you know it just may elongate the process. So we have a very efficient um, efficient process, but those are kind of the two bottlenecks that you'll you'll run into. The last part I think that is important is that we do have a mechanism that allows us to fix any errors that do occur. So this is something that, again, if you ran this huge, huge migration of moving that data up there and then all of a sudden one, one key list failed and we, we go find out that, oh, that's right, we had, we had a special data type in there or we had a, I don't know, some kind of a calculated field or something like that that, that wasn't, wasn't quite right. We can fix those things and resubmit resubmit just that one that one list. Okay, let's jump in and, and show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna pull pull up the PopDoc data lake upload tool. Just maybe something to point out. This is part of PopDoc, right? It is not a separate purchase at all. So it comes with your PopDoc subscription and allows you to do this. If we look into um, some of the things that are available, right, we're gonna be focusing on just the nav copy tables right now, but you do have the capability of using this across GP and SL, and then very soon just a generic SQL database. So we're gonna go with the copy tables. You will, the first thing it do is you'll log into your PopDoc account, and then it'll pull any accounts that you may have access to. I, I know there's many partners that are often, often listening to this, and uh, you may have access to more than one account, kind of like I do. Um, this will allow you to log into the correct account and, and see the information. So once I do that, once we log into that account, um, the next thing it's gonna show me is the data lakes that I have set up inside of there. Okay, there we go. So inside of this account, we can see that I have way too many data lakes set up. But the one we want for this one is my one called ADL-NAV. Um, we put in um, our, our information again, where it's gonna be going, which, uh, which container to put the table in, and then our special key, and then I connect to that data lake. So now we're good, now we have the, all the data lakes. The final thing here is that we're connecting to the, your NAV server. And so let's talk about a couple of key things here. Right, is this server, again, mine is internet facing, so it may look like a website. And most of you are just gonna have something like SQL, you know, SQL or um, nav SQL or whatever that SQL is called, um, that's what you'll have in there because it's, it's gonna be internal to your network. You will have to specify the port. Again, 1433 is the standard, um, but some people will put it on a different port. The system database, this is basically gonna be your occurrence of nav, right? So on my certain um, a certain list of databases, I have about 10 of them on there. And so I'm picking my nav 20, 2018 one in this case. And then we connect to that database with a SQL username and password. One thing to point out on that um, is it does not need to be the SA user. It just needs to be a user that has access to that database and all of the tables inside of it and one of the things is just making sure that we can actually run the sys objects so that we can get all of the the metadata on that um on that table you know basically all the tables inside of there so that we get the right data types and those kinds of things and then finally once you connect to there you will start seeing the the companies that you have access to now many people will have you know a test company or sandbox or training company you know, whatever it may be um, so there's some people that will have companies that they don't want to archive to, to the data lake. It doesn't make sense to, you know, maybe archive a, a test company. So you can, at that point in time, you can choose that you don't want to, to move that specific one. So I'll, I'll just say in this case, maybe I don't want to move um, the Canadian one, right? I'll, I'll move these two companies, but I'm no longer using this one or something like that. 
And then really the next part is in this case, it's going to start running the process. So what I wanna show you is as we're cranking through this, a couple of things. You can see how many um, tables it's gonna be running. So in those two tables, or sorry, those two companies, we basically have uh, almost 3,000, you know, 3,000 SQL statements that are gonna be running. And then it tells you how many are left, um, how many that have completed successfully, uh, then how many have been skipped. And then if we had any that failed, you would see that there'd be another status in there that would tell you how many that failed. Now you might ask, what does skipped mean? In this case, skipped means that there's no data in there. And this is true. Like there's a lot of these tables that, that don't have any information in. And so it doesn't really make sense to just move an empty table um, out to the to the data lake and have it sitting, you know, have a thousand empty files sitting in there. So we kind of have some some intelligence built in there that we, we're not moving any table that doesn't have anything in it. So while this is cranking away, and you can see it's it's moving pretty quickly, um, let me take you back to PopDoc for just a couple of quick things to talk about before we move on. So PopDoc, again, is going to allow us to, to really um, do a number of things. Uh, inside of here, just showing you the web interface, this is basically the same thing I showed you embedded inside of Dynamics 365 Finance, but this is now a, um, in this case, let's see, come on. This is now embedded, or I should say not embedded, but this is inside of our web application. Uh, I can create favorites and all those kinds of things, just exactly like I would do it there and they'll be reflected. But I wanted to just show you a little bit behind the scenes of, of really what is what does this look like? So this data lake connector that I talked about, here is our ADL nav connector, right? Because we're extracting that out. If I look at here, I've only added a couple of these tables, but if I wanted to um, add additional additional ones that have been set up in here already, you'll see there they are, right? They're, they're in there um, and we can add any of those. Now, when we, um, when we have the list capability, those will automatically, the lists will automatically be in there because there'll be a much smaller subset of lists, right? Even though there's uh, maybe 1,500 tables, I think we said in, in each of those companies, um, we might only have, you know, 60 lists or something like that that are kind of those common ones that you might have that are customers, vendors, you know, customer ledger entries, vendor ledger entries, you know, journal entries, all, all those kinds of things. But basically this is where you will have those in inside of here and can can interact with it. And remember we talked about the capability of being able to combine that history with information from the, the live FNO system. This is where you would do that, right? We can do what we call a merge list. And so I would basically take the history um, from that came from NAV and then I would say, I, I want to match it to this, you know, FNO list. And then I would basically define what I want the field called. And now I have one list that has information coming from both of them. I don't have to search all over the place to see the new versus old. Okay. So I just wanted to show you just a little bit inside of here, right? This is, this is really the data lake where everything uh, now, now lives up, up inside of the, um, up inside of your your Azure Data Lake account, and then we're allowing you to access it and put it again. It doesn't even have to be put inside of FNO. We can we can actually display that information anywhere we like. Okay, well, let's go take a look at our status here. Okay, we're getting we're getting close to the end. <laughs> Looks like um, again about half of them have data, and and the other half uh, don't have any any more information in. I'm gonna, I'll maybe tell you one more thing while we're, while we're waiting for that to complete. Another part to this, right, is that when we want to um, choose which companies, we'll, we'll see that um, inside of here, we'll, we'll see which companies have been, have been chosen. Uh, I just removed this previously, so I'll have to fix that again. But we also have um, ways of, when we look at these lists, we can still interact with them. So 
this is like a not very nice, I could rename this list, um, even though it's just kind of a, a dump of the table. But if you look at each field inside of here, we have the capability of in this, in this particular um, thing to, to change what, what the behavior of, of this is. So if we look at uh, like budget amount, for example, uh, this probably makes sense to be a currency. And so I can change this to a currency. I can also have it summarized. And so I have ways of working with it. And again, each each column that I want on here, I can even still put calculated fields. So even though this is no longer in a, a SQL database, I can still manipulate it and again, add some really cool logic in here to, to create fields that, that are needed. Um, I can choose which which fields will default. So I can I can add those inside of here and say, hey, we want to, we want to mount and I got the customer name. Pick email. Well, I'll just pick one more, like uh, the number field. There you go. And there we go. That's now my you know my default fields. I can move number up to the top and probably name as well. So there's some really nice things that you can interact with this data. It's it's not just a developer experience anymore. We've made it for end users that you can you can still work with it. Okay, looks like it was able to finish those last 800 um, records. So what I wanna show you now is here's here's the error report that, that we're getting, right? So if I sort by status, for example, looks like most of them are skipped or success. So none, none of them failed, but let's just say this, right? Let's say that there was one, um, let's just, I'll pick this top one here. If I wanted to, I could actually choose to, if I fix the problem, I could choose a retry on this one and just choose run again. And it, it would allow me to, oh, sorry, rerun the fa failure. And so now again, it ran just that one and we had the exact same issue as before is that there's, there's no records. Um, you can also see we can view the logs and um, and you know, dig into further why why that particular list failed. So we've tried to make this a really easy uh, tool for everyone to use and um, and again get extract that data out of your your nav system and and put it into a place where we can now access inside of FNO. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up a couple of key points here. We can securely connect to your Dynamics nav data by running this tool on premise and not have to poke any holes in your firewall. We can move data both quickly, again, as fast as um, your your servers and, and network will allow and easily move it, right? Not a developer exercise. We can actually move that to the data lake for you. And then finally, uh, it doesn't really mean much if you just dump it in there we have to be able to access it. And so PopDoc allows you to interact with it and access those, those reports um, right inside of FNO without having to leave that so solution ever. Okay, let's jump in and answer a few questions uh, that came in. Again, um, there's a couple out there already, but if you do wanna get your question answered, please put it into the questions pane and we will get it, uh, we'll get it as many, through as many as we can. Okay, the first one that came in was asking about which nav versions are supported. So let me say it a couple different ways. Any SQL version of nav, we're gonna be able to get the table data out, right? That's not gonna be a problem. We'll basically pull it out for all the companies that are inside of there. So that goes back um, you know, quite a, quite a ways. We have had a couple people that were on a prior version of nav that that wasn't sql based and really the only thing we can do at that point in time is to extract that out to like csvs and then with popdoc we we put those csvs up in the data lake and then we can still use that with popdoc but we just don't have the same part of the extraction tool for that so uh, you still can use it for older things there okay um could i show salesforce info inside of fno uh, yes, that's an option. Um, I, I don't know if you had a quick eye, but I did actually have Shopify information inside of FNO there. And uh, so you certainly could pull in Salesforce information or, or Dynamics uh, customer engagement or any number of things. PopDoc is really that tool. I know we focused on migration, 
story today, but it's really a tool that can pull in data from anywhere and display the information in there. Okay, I have ten, okay, I have 10 million historical sales orders. Uh, will this solution work for that? Yeah, that's that's a really important one, right? Is if we do, um, when people are going to FNO, oftentimes they do have some larger data sets. And so we have um, something built in for that. Uh, we call them splits. And so what we do is um, after we move that data to the data lake, you can run a split on the file. So if you're gonna be searching by customer, for example, we might split it by customer. So you only see that customer's records. And so then again, instead of seeing 10 million records, you'll maybe only see the the, the 10,000 that you have for that particular customer or, or 100 or 500 or whatever, whatever it is. So you'll see it per customer. Or again, another really common one is searching by a date range. Right, so you may say, hey, um, I'm gonna search by you know, transactions that occurred in this month or this year or something like that. So we have those kinds of splits that, that give you a much faster way of accessing that data as opposed to pulling all 10 million records each time. Okay, I think that's the last question in there. Let me just check. Yeah, that's it. So thank you everyone for your time today. Uh, if you do have some additional questions later on, please email sales at e1solutions.com and we'll, they'll find the right people to hunt, hunt them down and get you the answers. So thanks for your time today. And we'll talk to you soon.